So today we're part of a marine food web that all starts right here with algae and other microscopic life. Now these tiny organisms form the basis of a tangle of complex feeding interactions where big fish eat smaller fish and even bigger fish eat the big fish until everything out there is part of this food web. So it's easy to see how a top predator like the sharks here can have a direct effect on all the species below it. Have we ever thought about how a single species at the base of the food web can have a direct effect on all the species above it? That's what we're digging into at the heartland of America. Throughout most of its range across North America, the black bear stands alone at the top of the ecological pyramid. As the top predator in the food web in our forest, this guy eats a ton of plant and animal matter, and you'd think that he would affect everything below him in the forest ecosystem. Ironically, it's one of the smallest things at the lowest level of the ecological pyramid that affects and determines how well these bears and most other wildlife thrive in this ecosystem. Word of caution here, never attempt to get this close to wild animals. This is a controlled setting, so that's why we're here. Do you see this stuff? The food web in this forest begins right here. These are the building blocks for the base of this ecological pyramid. You get a little bit of organic matter, a little bit of water and sunlight, and presto, the forest creates the right conditions to support the base of this pyramid. Now in many ecosystems, the lowest trophic level, the primary producers, or autotrophs, have the greatest numbers and directly support the next ascending level of the pyramid. Now in this place, one species in particular changes the typical trophic pyramid and directly connects all the way to the top. And right here from where we're looking around, you can see this bur oak, which is part of the white oak branch. Um, there's a red oak just back there that I can see. We also have black walnut, we have aspen. Uh, I think there's a shagbark hickory right up over there. So there's a wide diversity of tree species here. But when it comes down to basically putting food on the ground, it's the oak trees that make the greatest contributions to supporting this ecosystem here through the acorns. You think about some of these trees, they can put out over 20,000 acorns in a year, in a good year. <laughs> some of these forests in the fall will have um, over 200,000 acorns per acre on the forest floor. Whoa. And at the base of the pyramid, for example, say we have acorns in a bumper mast crop year. We'll have acorns literally covering this forest floor right here. Primary consumers of acorns are going to be just about everything that lives around here. Deer, um, squirrels, mice, um, rabbits, just about everything is going to consume. They're going to be a primary level consumer of those acorns. Then you have secondary level consumers, essentially the predators. Okay. You're going to have coyotes, um, an occasional bear, and some wolves that are going to eat the deer and the rabbits and the squirrels. You also have for example, around here, hawks and owls that are going to take squirrels and rabbits and mice and transfer that energy up further. Now, how does the energy move up the pyramid? Does it, is it transferred 100% all the way between each one? or No, the energy transfer from one level to the pyramid to another is actually pretty inefficient. And I think the more successful ecosystems are going to be the ones that have more efficient energy transfer. So if you have a pyramid with a wide base with this much energy, you're going to end up with the next level. The first primary consumers are going to have this much energy. Right. The next level is going to have this much energy. Thus, we get the pyramid effect oh. of the energy transmission up through the pyramid. 
Okay, so how do the types of oak forest ecological pyramids differ from many other ecosystems? Well first, oak forests don't follow the typical pyramid of numbers, where the lowest trophic level contains the greatest number of individuals that support fewer individuals on the next level. Here, a single oak tree as the primary producer supports a large number of first level consumers. So it's inverted. Some ecologists think that the pyramid of energy or upward energy transfer is slightly greater in an oak forest than let's say a prairie ecosystem. That's because acorns contain a high percentage of fat and very high caloric value compared to grasses and most other plant material. No wonder animals in oak forests build so much fat. And finally, an oak forest pyramid of biomass clearly dwarfs many other ecosystems in the sheer mass of living material in the first trophic level. Here, it's measured in tons. But perhaps one of the most untypical things about the oak forest ecosystem is one of its inhabitants. One of the unique things I think about this ecosystem, and bears are uh, one of the top level predators in this ecosystem, but bears are also a primary consumer of acorns, the major energy source in this ecosystem. So the bears will focus on acorns when they're on the ground and be a primary consumer, and then in the spring and the next summer they'll be focusing on deer fawns, they'll be om omnivorous and eating anything they can come about, basically becoming a top pyramid level predator or consumer of the energy. So they kind of move energy throughout this ecosystem pyramid um, from the bottom to the top. Whatever is most available, it doesn't really matter to them if they conform with the energy pyramid or not. They take what's available. So we've learned that environments can vary in energy conversion between levels of the pyramid, but also in the number of organisms at each level. In oak forest, the acorn at the bottom directly connects all the way to the top of the food web with the black bear. Oh, I think I got a second stage consumer. Never stop exploring your Please. world. Asian. Oh.